go. Welcome to the second edition of What A Shout here in the studio, the Racing Post new weekly hot topic show. Absolutely delighted to say, got man of the moment, Harry Cobden with us. Big day for Harry yesterday at Boxing Day. We'll touch on that very shortly. Charlie Post comes into the studio as well. Charlie, Welsh Grand National winning jockey and ace tipster Paul Keeley back in the studio to tell you how to bet and where and on what more importantly. Okay, hot topic. We've got to kick off, haven't we? Two minutes every section. Fast and punchy. That's what we're after, lads. And we've got to split it, I think. Because yesterday, chaps, we saw Fourheen. But let's start with Clander Zobo, Paul. Back-to-back winner, 15th back-to-back winner. RPR of 179. Was he worthy of that? Uh, it was a great performance, no doubt about it. But I think everything else ran below form for one reason or another. Don't think Footpad stayed. Don't think ASO stayed. Lost in translation. Didn't handle. Uh, Kempton might, you know, they said he wanted a, a wind up. There's loads of very, very good horses not handled Kempton, including Dem and Native River. Um, that sort of thing. So I wouldn't write him off. Um, but surname, I didn't think he was travelling that well. Uh, from a long way out. I thought Harry had to get after him and I'm sure he'll fill us in very shortly. But uh, Clanders Ob is a very, very good horse. Don't get me wrong. Uh, a deserving dual winner, but not convinced about the level of the form. A perfect moment to come over to Harry. Mixed day then, Harry. Well, disappointing day probably for you. Couple of seconds. and But we were talking off air in the green room, if you like, and you said you thought you were beating from Flagfall because I said to you, was it the plan to hold him back initially? It wasn't. No, no, no. The, we, we, we were... Um, or every intention was to bounce out and make the run in and rip along and wing over the first two and sort of make it into a good even gallop the whole way. And um, he, he was not reluctant to jump off, but he wasn't as keen as he was. And he didn't really take me along. He went slightly left the whole way. And That's an interesting point, isn't it? Yeah. Lugging slightly left. Because, of course, Paul, they just don't want to go left-handed with this horse. Yeah, I, I think they're changing their minds now, though, because, you know, he, he went a little bit to his left at Ascot, not quite as markedly as it was yesterday. I mean, it wasn't violent um, yesterday either, but, you know, they, they can't, you know, if you had no evidence whatsoever that he couldn't go left-handed, you'd say he wanted to. Is there not an element that he was just very ready for Ascot, this horse? Like, I just thought... You were all over Clans Yeah, over, massively, because I just, thought, I just thought surname... Paul Nichols was obsessed with, get, with getting rid of Altior's unbeaten record. He didn't want the comparison to Corto to ever be made. And I just thought that he looked very flat on the day. And I think, you know, he peaked at Ascot. And, and for me, that was D-Day. Choices then, Harry. Come on, you've dodged him so far. You made the choice. It was a tough choice, as Paul said. Would you do it again? I think I would, yeah. Um, look, the surname was never at the races yesterday. When he's on form, um, he's a different horse. He's, 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 he's a better horse he, than Clanders I, th I thought so going into the race. Um, Andy Capital would have said so. You know, if you chucked Clanders over in the race at Ascot, I don't think he would have got past certainly. But, um, you know, as circumstances were yesterday, the best horse won on the day, and I think surname underperformed. You've got to bring your A game to the table. That's right. Fair play. All right, uh, let's have a quick mention of Fahim Chaps. We've gone slightly over two minutes, but we cannot, we cannot go out without mentioning the Faheen machine. Paul, give us amazing, a Amazing, amazing performance. Racing Post ratings giving him a mark of 166 with second start over fences. Now, Which I just had a quick um, churn out of my race form interactive from 2006. Only three horses have bettered that. Duvan, Altior and Simon Sig. For a horse, they were five and six. This is an 11-year-old. What Except a amazing. shout. Well, as these shows go on, we'll see where the Fahim the Machine goes. Could he be a Gold Cup contender? We'll find out later on. Right then, we're on to the big questions of the day for Harry and for Charlie, first of all. But um, let's go to you, Harry. We know you've got an outstanding book of Cheltenham Rides coming up, potentially surname still in the mix there. Uh, but we want something a little bit darker, maybe. Something for the handicaps. Paul usually comes up with something for the handicaps. Something, you know, at a juicy price as well. Is there something at the moment that the punters have maybe not quite latched onto so far? Um, well, we've had a... We've had a Few uh, few nice horses come out this year. Um, one horse that's been a little bit disappointing over hurdles so far this year is McFabulous. Um, you know, uh, I thought he was the best one we had. He looked like a right dodgepot, didn't he? At and uh, yeah, he he hasn't he hasn't got his act together um, so far this year. But he could turn out very well handicapped, and he might be in a handicap at the festival off a um, off a decent mark. Um, so he, he's one to look out for. And obviously, you know, the juveniles we probably haven't seen the Fred Winter winner yet this year. Or they take the, just longer to come to themselves and come over from France. They do, yeah, and they need time to to, to sort of get into a routine. And um, you know, Johnny Delay's bought a nice horse called Solo that won at Otoy the other day. So you know he could be one for the Triumph. He looks a lovely type. And uh, so yeah, we've got we've got plenty plenty in the in the sidelines. 
trifecta. I was just looking at you then, Paul, because oh. fabulous. A horse that maybe, you know, top bump yeah, horse hasn't quite gone for... him last year. Handicap. Handicap. Yeah, you know, horses came to him last year. I mean, he went away, didn't he? He looked like he had a right good attitude on him. And, you know, he's actually going to have to up his game to get into a race at the moment, isn't he? Like, you know what I mean? Because he's just been so disappointing. But... Maybe it'll turn. You don't like know. a one thirty. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. I mean, is it not an element that sometimes though they just take a bit of time to, to warm to jump in and what? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, mean, you, you I know, think it's very easy. To, you can't really write horses. You can never, you can never write them off. Horses, you know, it's, your horses going from hurdles to fences. They can take a season. And, you know, remember, um, remember Menorah was terrible as a novice. I know he ran in the in the, in the Arthur and stuff, but he, you know he couldn't get out of his own way. Uh, and, and then he went and won a loads. Of, What's up, boys? Years ago for Philip Hobbs, couldn't jump. With, couldn't jump to save his life to start with, but yeah. you know, ended up finishing second in the Grand National. So, you know, we're you know, got to give them time. Yeah. Any nickel sources that we should be asking? Yeah, I want Cerno to run in the Ryanair. I think it's a certainty, but apparently that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't rule that out whatsoever, because I mean, look, if he's lugging left, you said Paul, yeah, you know, off air just we were coming in last time he ran. You know, left handed was ain't and obvious. Wasn't that far off form? Yeah, it wasn't. wasn't a mi- wasn't a mile off form. He was below form, but then a lot of horses are below form. Are, you know, Aintree in the spring after having had a, a longish season. So, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any worries about him going left-handed at all myself. There you go, Ryan Air, get on. Right, let's get to the question over to Charlie then. Well, it's Welsh National Day is when we're recording this show. An absolute slog fest. You won it in 2011 with Le Beau Bike. <clears throat> Highlight of your career? Yeah, definitely. I mean, yep. first big winner as well. So it was a, a special day for me. What does yeah. it take to win the race? Uh, it takes a lot of guts and courage from the horse. You know, they, like you say, they have to stay very well. But it's a, it's a funny thing, especially with the old start. They they need to have a bit of early toe as well. Like you, you don't you don't often see them coming from miles back, and, and you need speed to get to get out the gate and, and hold a sensible position early on before then staying incredibly well. What's your view, Harry, of the race going a little bit longer? I think it's extra furlong, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's good. You know, it's just, for the old start, you're running straight into a left hand bend. Well, there's some banter down at the start, wasn't there? There was a bit of carnage. And it's, it's like WrestleMania down at the start. But it's like, you know, as in, everyone wants to be somewhere. I was a big fan of that. Exactly. Song. Everyone wants to be sort of very handy near the inner, don't they? And, and, and it's so everyone's galloping all over each other. You know, like you say, there's no fence till we break it all up initially. And as Harry said, you're going 150 yards to like a hairpin left hand bend, you know? So. It, it is very, very messy, and this will help a lot. I'd so, say. in, in the future bottom. years coming, do you reckon that you know, people will now be looking more well? Well, I can now, I can now lug in and tuck in and and come from behind just because you, they've got that little bit of run to sort themselves out. It's a, it's a really good question. It possibly will, and I certainly think it will make people a little bit more sensible at the start. Do you not think? I think so, but at the same time, it's a handicap, not a grader race. And you know yourself, Charlie, a grader race, they go a good gallop the whole yeah. way. Whereas a handicap, there's plenty. If you if you if you hit the front and you're in front, mm. you can dictate it. Right, yep. And uh, that's a good point. And in the often in these long distance races, because by nature they're also a little bit slow. For some reason, that means that you go faster early, doesn't it? You know, as in it, like they're all strong stayers. Everyone wants that handy pitch. So it, it's so important to get out the gate, <coughs> jump well, get into rhythm, and, and go from there, isn't it? At the start of the day with the Welsh National, are you thinking it's all about this big slog fest? You, you know, you've got two mile handicap chases. Are you preparing yourself any different? I don't think so. I mean, like, I'm sure for like Harry and that, he's thinking about riding in the Grade One Juvenile Hurdle some years and stuff like that. You know, there's there's plenty of other big races, isn't there? I'd be trying to win the ones before it because the yeah. Welsh Nationals are stabbing the dark. Yeah, a bit of luck. So we all need a bit of luck in life. Let's move on. First of the big races we're going to look at then, the Frank War Memorial over three miles, Ireland's top stayers. And Paul, this has got a bit of an open look about it, hasn't it? You know, Bacardi's has beaten Apple Jade. Apple Jade got a decent record around Leperstown because she bounced back. Penn Hill in the race, superstar horse himself. Where are you looking here? Uh, it's become a lot harder now. Benny's out, hasn't it? Because she was a red-hot favourite. But um, I would say, you know, Bacardi's is going to be the, going to be favourite and probably the right favourite. I was beating Apple Jade. Now, I don't think that is such a big deal this season as it would have been last season. I mean, she's just not the, she's just not the mare she was for whatever reason. Um, one thing that interests me is that a lot of Willie Mullins' horses, um, when they've run first time out this season, a lot of them have run well below form and then they've bounced right back. So I wouldn't be surprised if Penhill runs well at a price. It was only two and a half mile in Hatton's Grace. It's not far enough for him. He's got a load of miles on the clock though, so he does need to bounce back. But, you know, it's not a race I'm going to bet in, but if I was going to, you know, if I was going to take on Bacardi's, it might be with Penhill. Well, might be a bit more in his favour as well. Harry, you're a big Bacardi's fan. I am definitely, yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's a very solid horse. He always turns up and runs his race, doesn't he? Um, I'd say it'd be very interesting to see Paul Townend rides in the race. That'd be a good indicator. Stormy Island, we're thinking, you know, could be the pace angle in the race potentially as well. Yeah, and, and you know, he just just might go a good, good even gallop and um, 
you know, Bacardi will be there at the business end of the race. Let's touch on, uh, you know, on Apple's Jay quickly then, chaps. I mean, why do you think, from a jockey's perspective, if you're riding these Charlie, for example, you think to yourself, right, she's mustered first time out every year, and then maybe she loses it a little bit more in the spring festivals. Is it because she's been on the go since three? Well, she's a French bred, isn't she? You know, and, and they don't always last that long, do they, being honest? And, you know, she, she'd been for a couple of yards. Like you say, she's had plenty of racing for a mare of her age, and it could just be that she's lost the the desire for it. I mean, I don't want to write her off, and Gordon Elliott would know better than Ellie or anyone, but right now the jury's out, isn't it, big time? They're not pulling her there yet, are they? They're happy to keep going to the west. Yeah, well, they're going to keep trying, aren't they? I mean, you know, I mean, she's obviously got a career in the paddocks afterwards, but I mean, she looks she looks like she's gone for me. I mean, they do, I think they work them fairly hard in France because they want to sell them, don't they? You know what I mean? So there she has been on a long while. Yeah, questions to answer then. Willie Mullins sold the key to the Frank Ward. 3.10 then at Leopardstown is the Savills chase. For my money, chaps, possibly the race of the meeting. Kenboy finally turning up again. Of course, Will Album photo give him something to think about. And of course, we've got the likes of presenting Percy in there, Shattered Love in there. And of course, the likes of Mona Lee in there as well. Harry, serious race. It's very open, isn't it? Let's um, talk about choices again. <laughs> Which one would you be I riding? Know, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, obviously, Ken Boy will, will, will go off the hot favourite, wouldn't he? And, you know, he looked very good at the back end of last year. But, you know, Album Photo, he, he's very good on his day. He won the Gold Cup last year. Um, there's only £2 difference on official ratings. So, um, you know, if there was any any question marks with Ken Boy, Album Photo would be, be the one for me. Tactically, Paul, Cheltenham looked ideal for Album Photo, didn't it? Further he went, the better he got. This is this can be a bit more of a cat and mouse test, and then they wing it, don't they, from three out? Yeah, it can be. I mean, you know, it's a fair field, but I mean, he's not short of pace, is he? I mean, what was it, two mile five at Tremor that he that he won over last year for his warm up, and you know, he had all the clock watchers purring then, so yeah, he's not enough. a slow horse. Um, end of last season, um, Paul Townend was like, you know, he was saying that he didn't think he was in quite the same shape as he was at Punchestown as he was in the Gold Cup, that's understandable. Obviously, Kenboy didn't have a race in the Gold Cup because uh, he unseated at the first. In fact, he's, but Kenboy has only lost twice in the last 18 months, and that's when he came down at the first both times, once yeah. in the Irish National. So, you know, he, you know, he's a very, very good horse, and it, he looked fantastic at Punchestown, and he looked fantastic when he won at Leopardstown as well. So, you know, he's very much the one to beat. Um, but Album Photo, if he's on good form, you know, they, they would be the two for me. Paul Townend was brilliant on him though at the Cheltenham. Oh, like, he didn't yeah. jump that great early on. No, he didn't. Like, no, the no, fences no. were getting in the way big time and it was an exceptionally good ride to get him home in front like he did, I thought. You think he's going to win the race, Charlie? No. I, I, I like, presenting, of other horses, I like presenting Percy. I thought it was a super run over two and a half the last day. And with the extra trip now and everything like that and a run under his belt, I think he's the one they've all got to beat and he'd be the one I'd want to ride. I'm assuming that he just had a problem that the trainer never told anybody about last year because I, mean, I would I would that's agree terrible that is just yeah. a, a terrible prep for a Gold Cup wasn't it yeah you know how he went off favourite still after that I, I don't know but, ridiculous yeah. Yeah. I mean I you know I actually backed him at you know hundreds for the Gold Cup as a novice just thinking that hang on this is a very good horse but no longer convinced well so much more we could talk about the Savills an absolute belt a quick selection from everyone album photo Kenboy Kenboy oh, Kenboy presenting Ken Percy album photo. Ken Boy for me as well. There you go. Time for the My Racing Double. Now, contrary to some belief in the opening show, that absolutely landed. Paul Keeley, Clanders Oboe and Forheen. Could uh, not have it, could you? No, could not have it at all, no. I mean, you know, 18 and I, I, love, one I love Forheen, yeah. 18 after one, I said, no, don't get on. You wouldn't want to lay too many 18 and after one on shots, would you? Uh, <laughs> I can't explain it. I, I just thought it was between <laughs> Lost in Translation and, and Surname. Um, they both probably left their races behind. OK, well, let's start with Paul then. This week, we've got Kenboy and Classical Dream. Now, Kenboy, you've said you're all over Kenboy anyway. Yeah, I think, Ken Boy, I think Kenboy is, is, is the one to beat. Classical Dream is obviously the one to beat in the, in the Matheson hurdle, I think it's called. Um, He's got a little bit to prove now, though. I mean, you know, again, it's one of those Willie Mullins horses that ran really poorly on his first start of the season. Um, but the reasons for it are a little bit worrying because he ballooned the first horse and then raced really keen. It wasn't it wasn't a case of just being unfit. He just didn't look very tractable, like you know what I mean. So I'm sensing looked, not quite as much opposition to this double. As no, the, not really. I mean, I still think that, you know if he you know if he's the same horse he was you know in the Supreme Novices Hurdle and at Punchdown afterwards, and he's very very much the one to beat, and he's still the one to beat in the Champion Hurdle. Although we do know that only one horse has ever won the Supreme Hurdle, the Supreme Novices and the Champion Hurdle the following year. 
Well, let's see what it pays. That's the My Racing Double. Don't forget, if you want to bet, sign up to a Racing Post for all the best offers. Let's move on then, have a look at another big race. As mentioned just then, Classical Dream. It's all about him, isn't it? In the Matheson hurdle. But he's got to beat last year's winner. Sharjah is going to have his ground again. Reopposing Super Sunday, we think it's going to be there. Hmm, Classical Dream. Can he still bounce back, Harry? Uh, let, let's maybe talk about Epitante yesterday as well, at, you know, at Kempton. What was the vibe in the weighing room afterwards? She was very, very impressive. Um, you know, she, she did it the hard way. She didn't have an easy way through. She came five wide around the bend and she won in a hat canter. So, look, I thought that was a very, very impressive performance. What was Barry saying afterwards when he came back in? You know, smile on his face and, you know, he, 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 he's a very good judge, Barry, and, and he said she's a fair old tool. Like a bit of a substandard uh, renewal, didn't it? But she has now. It was a, you know, it was a, it, you know, a lots of lots of races look substandard renewals on paper, and then uh, along comes an improver. And Silver Street was third last year in Champion Yeah, and that's what it is. She's toyed, she's toyed with them all. She she looked very very good. I mean, you know, it's toyed an egg on your face because uh, and, and, and on Dabrook's Trophy Day, I was saying, you know, based on what she's done so far, she's this totally handicapped. This is a stinker. And now she's about thirty pound higher in about three weeks. Like, Typical you know. Henderson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and you can only beat what's in front of you, and oh. she absolutely smashed them, didn't she? But I, I still think. She's got to step up to win a champion hurdle a bit, oh. no? I mean, like, yeah. beating Silver Streak five or six lengths isn't a champion hurdle winning performance yet, but she's not massively on the upgrade. And in an open year, she does make... The point does is, though, it's in any normal year, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. In a normal year, but it doesn't look year. a normal year, does it? How many stars do you want? Absolutely. We need some emerging. Could yeah. classical dreams still be? Ruby Walsh, a couple of weeks ago, said, do not give up on this chap. Uh, Paul, well, tomorrow no, are we expecting this chapter to win? I mean, like I said, you know, if he go, comes back to what he was like in the Supreme, which was deeply impressive, as he was at Punches Down, um, then he's very much the horse to beat. He has something a little bit to prove now uh, because of what happened uh, first time out. Um, and Charger's no mug. Now, I did see that they were calling it now soft and heavy in places on the hurdles course, which doesn't help Charger. No. Uh, but um, he's no mug at all. He's got a bit of a turn of foot when he's ready. But he was below par same day as well. Classical Dream won at the meeting last year as a novice, expecting him to go in tomorrow? I am, yeah. I, 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 yeah, he'll win tomorrow. Too fresh the last day. He'll win tomorrow. Paul, not sure? I'm not, I think he'll probably win, but it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't. Okay, Classical Dream, it's over to you. Now, before we move on to the naps, let's look at some anti-post action. Perhaps not a winner at the Cheltenham Festival, but a horse to follow up to Cheltenham. That's what the punters out there might like. Something that might rack up a sequence or will get his head in front. Harry, have you got something for us? I quite like a horse that won at Ascot the other day called uh, Grenatine. Um, he pulled like a train from mile and a half and heavy ground and stay going. I think it was a very good performance. The first time up over fences. First time over fences, and you know he's got loads of boot, and uh, you know he, he, he could be something for a, maybe a grand annual or something like that. That's exactly what we want, Charlie. I'm just sending that one up for the festival. I, I like presenting Percy for the Gold Cup. I think he's twelve to one or something like that at the moment. I think after clear weekend, run of it. if he gets a clear run physically and there's no mystery around what's going on, I think he's gonna. He could be the one they've all got to beat come the day. Uh, Punter's horse. Paul? Novice chaser. No idea where he's going to go, but Bapam. Good hurdler. Finally clicked, didn't it? Really jumped really, really well last time. I mean, obviously, he, 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 again, another Mullins horse that um, was really poor first time out, but second time out, he jumped really, really well. Uh, and it's it, an interesting thing with him. High level it? over hurdles, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, where could he go? I mean, you don't know. It's a case of juggling them around, isn't it? You know? Three ones to follow then, up to the festival. Nearly coming to an end then of this week's What A Shout, and it's the time we've all been waiting for. Nap time in the studio. Let's go down the panel, starting with Harry Cobden. A winner, please, over the next couple of days. I think Enrillo's got a good chance in the Chalo Hurdle. He's obviously got a £6 to find with Time Hill on uh, official ratings, but um, he's a progressive horse. He's got a, it, 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 the wetter the better for him, and uh, you know he's, he's a good battler, so um, you know I think he's got a good shout. Very interesting race that's going to be. Charlie Post. You could ride both. Who would you ride? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't made any good decisions this week. so <laughs> It's all going to turn. It's all going to turn. Fair play, Zara. Taking a bit of ban today. Bad Loba Doyen on Sunday. Uh, I think his form is rock solid. He beat an Irish national winner in his last run. And I think he's very, very impressive horse. And I think he can take all the beating in the stay in Novice Chase division. Waiting for a fence, isn't he? Paul Keeley. Yeah, at Newbury. Uh, tomorrow, 150 handicap hurdle. One for Rosie. Uh, Nigel Twiston Davis, obviously man at the moment, Sam on board, um, has won after a break or first time out every time he's run. Um, so, and looks well handicapped to me on 145. Get on fresh. There are your naps. Well, just before we wrap up each week, we'd like to get a big call from each of the panellists. Big call for the racing ahead. Harry Cobden. 
Give us a big call. I, I struggled to find something to talk about, but um, I think, uh, you know, we got a new horse called Solo, and um, I'm not sure where he's going to go or what he's going to do, but, you know, he's a lovely horse, and he might run in the Triumph or something like that later on in the There's season. There's a proper buzz about him, is there? Yeah, he's a, he's a beautiful horse. He'll... he'll, he'll, he'll he um, looks the real deal at the moment. You heard it here first. Charlie Post. Classical dream to hopefully bring some definition to the champion hurdle market by winning impressively this weekend and rating himself as the number one contender. It's like it's shaping up a bit now, that champion hurdle, isn't it? Paul Keeney. Uh, surname will win the Ryanair. I just need to persuade Connections to run in it. Not going that well at the moment, but I'm going to keep trying. Something you've done successfully, unsuccessfully in the past. <laughs> well, if you're listening, Johnny Delahaye and Paul Nichols. Surname, let's go left-handed again. Just before we finally sign off then for the week on this What A Shout Glory, let's have a 2020 prediction from each of the panellists. Paul Keeney, come to you. Oh, Euro 2020s? Start with me. Euro 2020. England will, like they did in the World Cup, get people really, really excited and then they'll run into a good team and get absolutely battered in the quarters or semis because they've got no defence. No way. You can't have that? No. I think it's going to be the year we're going to bring it home, aren't we? Football's coming home. <laughs> yeah. Not a chance. I tell you, I saw Harry Maguire play at Watford the other day. He was a stinker. 80 million. My goodness gracious to me. Talking of which, my prediction for 2020, all you Hornets fans out there, we will be staying up. Watford are going to stay up. Nigel Pearson's in there. Harry Cobden, Fury versus Wilder. Give us a prediction. Tyson Fury all day Fury long. all the way to Gypsy King to knock him out this time. And Charlie Post. I'm going to go for Coventry to get promoted back to the championship, you know, but I am a dreamer, so. Yeah, absolutely. Big away support when they came down to Watford as well. Were you there? I wasn't, unfortunately, no. Mm. You've not invited me down. Armchair fan. That'll happen next time if we ever play each other. Unlikely scenario. <laughs> there are your calls for 2020. Well, that's it then for a bumper second edition of What A Show. I hope you enjoyed it. Harry Cobden, Charlie Poe, Paul Keeley, fantastic insight there for you. As promised, the biggest names here. Don't forget to get your comments in for the panel below or indeed go to Twitter, hashtag What A Shout. Also download the app via the App Store or indeed Play Store indeed. Well, so much to talk about next week. We're going to have a new co-host with me in the studio. What can possibly go wrong? We'll keep that on Tender Hooks for you. And a big name from the world of boxing as well. Cross Appeal, we promised it to you. It's coming. From me, Dave Orton, have a great new year. 2020, it could be a bit special. And remember, if you're having a flutter, do it responsibly.